Hello and welcome back to the Dota 2 Asian Championship 2015 here on Hefla TV. This is going to be game two of a best of two series between Speed Gaming and Mythrust. As for your casters, I'm Grandis Fee, and once again, I'll be joined by Skim. Hey man, thanks for having me. Hope my mic is maybe a bit better. It is. Hopefully it holds. Sweet. Well, looking at the draft, very similar to the previous draft, I want to say, at least in terms of bans, except that Mythrust now take out the Ember Spirit, so respecting the Chaoye Ember Spirit, and this time around, picking the Brewmaster, which was actually banned last time around. Yeah, definitely. The Ember Spirit deserves some love, for sure. Inside the draft, as we saw in that first game, how aggressive he was able to play, and the dives behind Tier 2 Towers, even though it cost him his life once or twice, made so much space for the Morphling as well. And Speed Gaming, as a general rule, played very well around the Myth Trust lineup, even though there were some glimmers of hope for Myth. We'll have to see how things go around for them. The Lycan first pick, followed by the Axe, is a very beefy front line for them, and it is also going to secure the Lycan pick as well. Although BKB is more or less going to be necessity up against the Brewmaster. Yeah, but uh, Myth Trust already have, I think... Um... I'm not going to say counter, but still a good hero against the Lycan. I mean, the Brewmaster, as I mentioned in the last game, you can just toss him up in the air, you know, for like 8 seconds or something. And you can practically disable him from the whole team fight. The same with the Axe as well, so... I think the Brewmaster is really good, solid pickup for Myth Trust to start with. Um, speed Gaming, as you pointed out, I don't know, I'm, I'm not really too sure if picking up both heroes already is too good for them. I guess they didn't want to give Axe away because it's actually a good counter to the Lycan. But um, it kind of, I guess they're still sort of flexible in terms of laning, but it sort of gives away a bit of their strategy already, I feel. Um, obviously, with the Lycan, you want to push a lot, and the Axe is a very good frontliner when you want to push in because he can zone out the enemy heroes, you know? So, yeah, and with the Witch Doctor, there's a, lots of, lots of, a lot of sustain, so Speed Gaming, they definitely want to push. For sure. They also ban out two split pushing carries that would be very annoying for them to deal with in the Anti Mage and Terror Blade. Although I hate to suggest it, Broodmother's in the pool, and Speed Gaming could pick up Broodmother and Lycan together. Oh god, please don't. Oh, I hate Broodmother. But yeah, you're definitely right. It's a really good hero. I mean, if you have the Howl up, those Spiderlings hurt a lot. Like, really, really hurt a lot. And um, Speed Gaming has actually one of the best counters towards the Broodmother, the Axe themselves. So um, if they do want to pick it up, it could be a good game for them, but I think this is one of those heroes that you want to pick up as the last pick, you know? Yeah, definitely. You want to hold it on until a little bit later. True Woolard going to be the next snag up for Myth Trust and Combo as well with the Vengeful Spirit. Going to give them some pushing power to rival that of the Lycanthrope. Yeah, the Troll Warlord is one of these funny things. I remember when Mouseports, uh, back with like Team Dog, picked it up, and it was one of these heroes, or it is one of these heroes. Your team lineup can be pretty bad at pushing, but just because of the Troll Ultimate, suddenly your team is actually a really good pushing lineup, you know? So, um, that's a good pick up there, and it's very popular lately, um, just because obviously that ultimate is really strong in team fights and in pushing, so you're very flexible in that regard. And usually he's a very solid laner. Um, Interesting to see both Troll and Brewmaster because both of them can actually go into the mid lane, but I suppose Troll can also be on the safe lane. Yeah, definitely a decent amount of flexibility coming out from both sides as to where these lanes actually shake down. It kind of feels like Brewmaster off lane Troll mid, but if the lane is terrible for the Brewmaster, which it very well could be, they do have that flexibility to shake things around. Yeah. Same obviously with Speed Gaming. Um, I mean, I'm a big fan of the Axe on aggressive lane, and I still think that's the possibility here with the Witch Doctor, because obviously you have a lot of sustain with the uh, with the heal, and with the Casket, there's like this sort of like initiation to get the Axe into range for a call, possibly. So um, there's potential there, but obviously Speed Gaming, they don't have to go for it, because I think, especially on the Dire side, going aggressive... Actually, on the Dire side, it's probably a lot better to go aggressive with the Axe, I feel, um, because creep skipping feels a lot easier. You have very easy control to the small uh, to the small camp as well if you choose to go for it. Um, who knows, but again, they might not go for it and probably play it a bit safer with like a jungle Axe or something. Yeah, we'll have to see how these lanes actually work out for them, and they could just go full greed and send the Axe from level 1 towards the jungle. We saw in the previous game how fast an Axe is able to get the Blink Dagger up. Silencer is going to be next choice for speed gaming, and a pretty interesting one at that. Going to make it a little bit difficult for the Brewmaster to get up his ulti. 
Yeah, interesting pickup. Um, what do you think? Support silencer, or is that going to be some sort of like mid silencer? Honestly, I don't really know. I'd like to see them give the silencer some more farm, especially since there's no guaranteed times where pressing ultimate's a good idea. It's going to be very situational from fight to fight, and I think just giving him a little bit more right click on top of it. I'm very interested to see how they actually utilize the hero. It wasn't something I was expecting. Yeah, me neither. Um, it doesn't really necessarily synergize with any of the heroes. I guess with the axe, sort of, because if you get a good call, you can obviously uh, get a good curse of this uh, curse, but that's not really some synergy you're looking for. Uh, I guess it's, yeah, as you pointed out, maybe just counterpick towards the Brewmaster just to be able to stop this sort of like initiation coming out from them and uh, keep the uh, aggression to a minimum. But uh, I guess support silencer is the best choice here. I don't see him bringing too much to the table on a core position. Um, I still think that like everything he brings to the table, he can do on a support uh, role as well. Especially nowadays since supports get so much fun anyway. So he can maybe pick up an early Midas and work towards an Aghanim Scepter as a support as well. Mistrust will snag up the Lich next. Another side note is Axe plus Silencer in the lane is really annoying to go up against if you have Battle Hunger as well as Curse being leveled. It's just constant harass coming out from you. And maybe they are going to go for an aggressive lane with these three heroes and look for some early kills to get Silencer some early stacks of it. Man, that could be actually, yeah, that's actually a good point. If they go aggressive with the Silencer, that's really, really annoying because they get rid of a lot of uh, regen items on the enemy lineup and as you pointed out, if you get an early kill, the early intelligence should actually not be uh, neglected because that is actually quite a bit of damage if you do choose to go for an early level of uh, glaives. Although, if you do play support, you technically, or you barely go for uh, the glaives, you usually go for last word and, of course, the Curse of the Sound. Unless they change the back, I think it's an innate part of the hero now. Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah no, 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 it's an innate, innate part, but I oh, mean, Oh, yeah, like, yeah, just um, the rest, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. just a, a rest, yeah, exactly. Okay, fair enough. Especially if you're looking at the Troll Ward and Brewmaster already struggling a little bit for the mana and can be very impactful if they're the ones to lose it. Either way, we'll have to see how Speed Gaming want to round out their lineup. It looks like Myth are expecting a mid-hero to be picked up, and they'll ban out the Queen of Pain. Myth also picked up the Lich. Um, very defensive support. Doesn't really add too much to a push because obviously the sacrifice actually works against that. And, uh, well, Myth trust were right. Speed does pick up a mid-hero. It's a shit of fiend. Yeah, and it can be very scary too. Given the laning situation up against the Brewmaster, it's not the easiest of lanes for the Shadow Fiend, but then again, it's not the hardest. You should be able to get over the hump after those early first waves and really start to dominate. It could be against the Troll as well, but even so, Shadow Fiend, although he's going to be slower in starting, still should have a pretty good game, especially considering Lich shouldn't be roaming much. Well, that's, I think, where the Lich comes in. I mean, you can, with the Lich, you're able to sort of, like, dominate the lane or at least control the lane. So they are likely to put a lot of emphasis on that mid lane to make sure that the Shadow Fiend doesn't get as much farm. Uh, it's interesting to see Speed Gaming pick up a Shadow Fiend anyway, because usually you see Shadow Fiend picked up on the Radiant side just because you have easier access to those two jungle camps, especially the easy camp. Um, I mean... It's usually one, what you want to do, like in between waves. You know, you just go to the uh, to the to the camp, farm up those with raises and bottle crow and stuff like that. But you don't really have this sort of stuff on the on the dire side. So I don't know. Maybe it's just a personal preference to pick up the shadow fiend. For sure. Well, to introduce the radiant side is Myth Trust on that side of the map. He he's going playing the brewmaster, presumably going towards the offlane. My pro on the troll ward, loading out with a lot of stats and Sabrigen looking towards mid. Noki on the support, Venge, Lakel's on the safe lane farming. Sven leaving last but not least, our Lich played by Kaneki. Yeah, and on the dire side, it is Melody Lovers on the Witch Doctor, YFTX on the Silencer, Chao Ye on the Lycan, Piao taking on the Shadow Fiend, and Seven Magic on the Axe. And as you did point out in the draft, it looks to be an offlane Brewmaster, and probably a mid troll. Yeah, well, for now, we're going to see the contention for the first bounty rune spawning, and it looks like both teams are going to be bringing in a lot of power in this first engage. Unfortunately, they're not going to have Lakels with his Stormhammer here, but we could be in for quite some fight. I love this. Ever since the bounty change, it's like always Mexican standoff at the beginning of the game. You know, people are just like staring down each other and like, dude, this is my rune. No, this is my rune. Who do you favor in this one uh, level one matchup? Uh, let's see. 
I'm really tempted to say myth, but Howl on all these heroes could be pretty crucial too. It depends on how many cast bounces they get. Bounty Run hasn't spawned yet, they'll open up with the Magic Missile onto the Lycanthrope and burst him down to clap, as well as with the Lich Blast, and now look towards Melody Lovers as well. They don't get that kill immediately, but the Witch Doctor is going to be forced to use a lot of her true gen, if not go all the way back towards the base. And a big win for myth, they also get the Bounty Rune for Noki. I mean, saying it now sounds like hindsight in 2020, but I feel like, yeah, Mythstrush definitely had the better lineup to fight there. Um, just because Shadow Fiend on level 1 doesn't really offer too much because you don't want to skill raises usually. I mean, it's a valid uh, option, but not always the choice. And as you said, they are kind of reliant on lucky bounces, and they were actually not in a great position to get good bounces off. Yeah, Silencer currently sitting mid lane is also going to secure this lane for the Shadow Fiend. It was something that you alluded to, maybe them sending the Lich towards the mid. But for now, this is going to ensure SF four stacks of his, <clears throat> excuse me, Necromastery at level one, which is a huge advantage and is going to make this laning situation a lot easier. After this, the Silencer can go up towards top, pull the wave, get some experience that way, but I really like that move, and it's going to help them out a lot. He did go for the Glaze of Wisdom level one. Yeah, that's what they sort of need to do with the Shadow Fiend. I mean, sometimes even you see Shadow Fiend going for raises on level one just to be able to secure a lot of early, early farm to get that bottle up. Um, but since he uh, went for the Necromastery, the, uh, as you pointed out, the Silencer was there to just secure a bit of like a head start. And now he can sustain himself, sort of. Um, the Lich did rotate now to the mid lane, on bottom, the top lane actually. There's a rotation. Yeah, and the Lich is going to be constantly annoying to the Shadow Fiend. Although, for the most part, Piao should be doing just fine. Bottom lane, it's solo axe up against a Vengeance Fen, and just with the raw amount of CC that they can pump in this axe, he does need to be very careful, and I expect him to go to the jungle sooner rather than later, but at least for now, he's found himself level 2, and will probably get level 3 before that happens. And both Brewmaster and Vengeful Spirit have boots, so Brewmaster can stay in lane a lot easier, and Vengeful Spirit can actually harass the axe, which is... If you don't have boots, it's actually really, really hard. But now that she has boots, it's sort of like not easy, but it's definitely a lot easier. Shadow Fiend actually going to die in mid after man fighting up against my pro. Not something that you want to have happen. I was not expecting that to go down. Either way, looks like he just got a little too close to the troll and he's going to be punished heavily for it. That early advantage secured by the silence is completely gone now. It really is, it really is. This is one of these things that shouldn't happen as a Shadow Fiend. I mean, it hurts your laning a lot if you lose such a man fight because you lose a lot of souls. But yeah, and especially now that Mypro has the bottle, so he can bottle up again and he can turn up the aggression again if he wants to. Yeah, and this man fight's going to be so much easier than the previous one. Top lane has settled down into a two versus three. After Troll gets that one kill on the Shadow Fiend, they don't really need the Lich to keep him down. Troll should be able to dominate this lane handily by himself. But in the meantime, they are going to look towards seven magic down towards bottom. They drop both of their stuns. They're Clarting up on the Vengeful Spirit. It looks like Axe might be able to run away with this. He is salving up. It will be cancelled, however. Let's see. Where's the Magic Missile status? It's going to be way too long. He's going to be well on his way towards this jungle before. And this way, the Axe actually wasted a lot of their times. Especially Lakelts, obviously. He wants to be farming on that lane. Um, so, yeah. It was good play. It was risky, obviously. But still, okay. And he doesn't actually even have to go back to base. He's regioning up quite nicely. And he can go back into the jungle. And I think he's going to stay here. There's no point in going to the bottom lane again. Because, obviously, they can actually kill him now. So, might as well just stay in the jungle and farm up your Blink Dagger there. Yeah, and you will be able to do that very easily. Outside of that, Myth have found themselves a 2-0 advantage, and things are looking good, but my goodness, Shadow Fiend! He gets revenge in the mid lane after a double raise combination connects on the troll. Not the highest of HP pools of any hero, especially when you're in that range to him, which he was. Yeah, and this, again, I mean, this is one of these things that shouldn't happen, because he had the advantage, and he even had the bottle. I mean, Piao didn't have the bottle up, so... He didn't actually have too many raises to work with, and he still got the Troll Warlord, so maybe Troll getting a bit overzealous after that first blood. Yeah, it kind of feels like it's Speed Gaming going to be striking back. Axe down towards the bottom lane, he actually decides to go there, and this is why he probably shouldn't. With the double stun combination of the Sven and Venge, they are going to be able to secure that. And oh, oh, the walls. Double raise. Oh, oh, what? Oh, poor Vengeful Spirit. Uh, I was just watching the wolves denying actually top rune, so this troll warder... Ah, this lane is gonna get a bit harder now, especially since there's also an illusion rune up, the, up on the SF, so that gives him a lot of control over this lane if he wants to go for it. Definitely, and 
Yao, after a really shaky start, is now sitting in a pretty comfortable area and should be for quite a long duration. He up towards top doesn't have a great way to get off of the get off the curse of the silent from him. So he is going to be pretty much completely drained. Although for the most part, this brewmaster is farming well. He's doing quite nice for himself. I mean, as a brewmaster, you technically only need levels anyway. I mean, as soon as you level six, you're you can already contribute a lot. But on top of that, he's also sitting on one k gold, and I think he is gonna just save for the black dagger, not gonna buy an arcane boots or anything like that. And uh, it's gonna be an actually fairly early blink dagger. Oh, the lich. He's yeah, he's spotted out. And now in a whole lot of trouble. One raise, two raise. That's going to be the end of Lich's life. And Biao has been on point with those raise combinations. Currently sitting at three and one. Yeah, you can't really do that against the wolves from the Lycan, honestly, because they scout you out anyway. And obviously, I mean, it's a very aggressive play considering that it's a Lich. Because even if he, I mean, what was he doing there? Was he going to rotate for a gank on the Shadow Fiend? I mean, sure, if they get good slow on him, they might be able to burst him down with a troll ultimate, but it's a very risky play, especially with an axe running around. Yeah, it really is. Shadow Fiend is going to get a bottle refill up towards top as he secures the bounty rune, and also has some wards to place for himself. We're getting close to that level 6 on Hihi, so we are going to have some killing potential up towards the top lane, but for the most part, the action's been centered around this SF in mid, with Yao getting the advantage there. Yeah, and on the other lanes, I really like this movement from Speed Gaming. Um, they do this sort of stuff that, I mean, most teams do when they have a Lycan in their team. They just send the Lycan towards the jungle now, um, and they give the lane actually to the, both, uh, to the two supports, so the Silencer and the Witch Doctor can farm up and get their levels. And both heroes are actually like, he those are, uh, heroes that you want levels and farm on, because obviously the Death Ward on the Witch Doctor is really strong. Oh my goodness, they find the kill on the SF inside the mid lane with the Troll Ultimate spent. It really just doesn't stop inside mid. Is It's a back and forth battle for the SF. And even with this um, large amount of vision being spent to try to keep him safe, it doesn't help you up against smokes, and they were able to find an angle. It does really feel like they're putting so much emphasis on the mid lane, like two wards just covering the mid lane, just making sure that this SF has as much vision as possible. Um, but a good rotation coming out from Mythros, obviously, putting the Venge finally into their mid lane, because Lich by himself is not going to be able to get a kill there, but with Avenged, obviously, they have the lockdown and the burst damage to take him down. For sure. Well, the spend has been pretty darn quiet down in the bottom lane, although that might end sooner rather than later. We'll have to see what Lakels decides to go for this game. Maybe it's going to be a Blink Dagger rush for him, and I think that would be a pretty solid choice. There's going to be a smoke rotation coming out from Mythrust, and they do find the axe. Can they kill him is the question. I'm not sure. They don't have the Brewmaster ultimate, so I'm not sure that if that's going to be a kill. In fact, they might actually turn this around. With the Lycanthorpe running through, they don't need very much to actually munch down Hee Hee. They have some raises from long range. The Shadow Fiend is going to be able to contribute that much, but Joey is dropping low. He still wants to go for my pro, however. This Lycanthorpe being very bold with the last word onto the Troll Ward. They should be able to kill him, but not with Lycanthorpe's. Going to get a double stun, however, it doesn't follow up onto anything. They just can't do it. Lycanthorpe's now completely tapped out of mana. He really just can't find a target to stick on, and after a lot of traded spells, it's actually going to be nobody falling. I thought it was a weird movement coming out from Mythrust, um, moving, oh, bottom lane. Oh, the Lich, I think he should be fine, actually, yeah. He's definitely faster than this Axe. Uh, but yeah, I thought that was, it was a weird movement coming out from Mythrust. I mean, moving with a Brewmaster I thought was a cool idea, but not when he doesn't have level 6. I mean, even if they had found the Lycan, could they have killed him? I'm not too sure, honestly. Yeah, I don't know. With the split, it's at least a possibility. Without it, there just really isn't any chance. Yeah, and Lycan now has the uh, Vladimir's. Uh, I think in about, I don't know, like two minutes or something, he should be able to go Roche if they maybe build like a medallion or something. Even without it, they can actually do it just because they have the Dire Advantage and the Shadow Fiend actually deals a lot of damage as well. So um, that's obviously, yeah, again, the Dire Advantage playing towards Speed Gaming right now. Yeah, we'll have to see if they're actually going to find an opportunity to do so. For now, the lanes have gone back to the way they have been throughout the majority of this game. Lakel's looking towards just a flat-out BKB rush, it seems. Ah, well, BKB rush, I guess, makes... I don't know, I, I'm not too sure if it makes too much sense. I guess it's good against the Silence, obviously, but eh, I don't really see it because he doesn't really deal too much damage, and I feel like Mask of Madness first could have been really nice, especially in uh, in combination with that Troll Ultimate. He just He's just so fast. Yeah. 
I personally would have liked to see an armlet just to see them play super aggressive, maybe like blink into armlet, but yeah, that's probably not gonna happen. Still, we are going to just be shelling. Lycan continues to farm up inside the woods and they'll give some space towards the silencer, but now that Brewmaster has this level 6. He needs to be careful, but maybe not that careful. As the Curse of the Silence is going to deny that inside the woods, however, there's going to be the Wish Doctor ultimate let loose. Going to be cancelled instantly, however, and that's going to be a clean 2-0 for Myth, as they just find a really awkward spot that Speed Gaming aren't really prepared to defend at. I thought that was, uh, Myth Trust, that was really smart by them. Like, I think they were thinking or they were preparing for the Lycan to go for the Roche. And it was actually the Witch Doctor and the Axe that were sort of like pre preparing the Roche area. And they just caught them both off guard, which, which was a nice movement. Um, and I think with this sort of like kill, they sort of delayed the Roche attempt a lot. Um, well, yeah, interesting enough also, the Shadow Fiend, if you look at it, he's actually going for a mech. Yeah, the Mushi build coming out from Piao. And if they're able to transition this into tower pushes and into the Rochon, it's going to pay off for itself, but it is going to be pretty... Oh, never mind. It's not going to be delayed. He's sitting on a lot of gold inside the bank, so scratch that. It will be the next couple minutes of the game that will tell whether this mech is really going to work out or not. He has some mana problems with the mechanism build, but it's not super significant. I like the call, but only if they're able to like take one or two tier twos in the next five to ten minutes. Yeah, I agree. I mean, oh wow, what a huge misplay. They actually smoked inside of Tower of Vision. Ah, oh, God. That's awkward. Yeah, that was really awkward. Like, the Shadow Fiend walked into the vision of the tower, and yeah, I was pointless. But yeah, uh, as you pointed out, I agree. Like, um, the mech pickup itself is not too bad, as long as they play around it and, you know, make sure that they utilize the item fully. I mean, mech has sort of fallen off, uh, uh, fallen out of favor overall anyway. Um, but if you do pick it up, you have to sort of play around it as well, especially on the Shadow Fiend. And, I mean, they do have this sort of lineup that can go for this, right? I mean, they have the shadow, uh, they have the lycanthrope to push the lanes with. They have the sustain coming out from the witch doctor as well. So, um, this, if there is a lineup to pick a uh, pick up a mech on the shadow fiend, this is probably it. Yeah, especially considering that he's dealing up against some minus armor coming out from vengeful spirit and a decent amount of physical damage too for pretty much everybody involved on myth. And, well, it is going to be completed up, so let's see if those tier 1 tower pushes are going to come after the fact. Looks like Sven actually thinks better of the BKB rush and is going to go for the full Mask of Madness after a casual overclub. Global Sound is going to commit as they look towards mid, but Piao with the Invis rune and no detection on the Radiant side means that he's going to be able to walk that one off. Very awkward, to say the least. Awkward from both sides, actually. I mean, they had the ward up there for quite some time, so they had complete vision over the Shadow Fiend throughout the whole time, and they should have known that he has an Invis rune. So I'm not sure why they blinked in or tried to initiate on him. Um, and, th and at the same time, the Silencer should have known that there was no way they could kill him since they uh, since he had an Invis rune, but... Ah, better safe than sorry, right? I suppose so. In the meantime, Joey is going to be inside the Roshan pit with his Wolves Medallion up as well. He can solo this Roshan, although it's probably going to be at the cost of a Tier 1 tower and also a Silencer up towards top. He's cleaved down. By Lakel's Troll Ultimate plus Sven God's Strength equals pain for the sports. Well, into the Rose Shant, it looks like Myth are going to scout this one out, and this is a disaster. The Lycanthrope is too darn local, can get Magic Missile up, and then need the Frost Blast. Ultimate being channeled by the Shadow Fiend, but now with the Chain Frost bouncing back and forth, they found a beautiful Chain Frost, and it's going to get all 10 bounces through. The Ultimate unveiled by Piao going to turn for MyPro, and with the Witch Doctor being channeled on Silence, they will be able to bring down MyPro, but that's about it. With the Brewmaster split, they will be able to turn onto Piao, although he isn't falling very quickly. He should be able to secure this kill, and it looks like he will, maybe, bottling up. Piao is going to survive, they are going to get an Axe Decapitation on the eventual spirit as Piao does eventually fall to the Brewmaster. No, Blink looking for just a little bit more damage. Piao, the jukes are real and Piao is going to survive. Witch Doctor turns, they get the curse onto Hee Hee. Now Hee Hee can do nothing but watch himself fall. Huge turnaround coming out from speed. It's going to be a three for nil. After a good initiation for Myth, that looked like it would turn out very well for them. Yeah, when that Lich ultimate bounced between those two heroes, I for sure thought this is it. They're, they're gonna get that Shadow Fiend, but I think they didn't really focus properly. Like, it was only the Brewmaster trying to chase him. I thought, I, I guess they thought he was dead for sure, but with the mech and the bottle charges he had left, he was actually able to, like, you know, uh, region up again. And this hurt Myth a lot. They put in so much effort for this. They used the Brewmaster split, and they didn't get a kill out of it. Well, I, I guess they did get the Lycan in the beginning, but that's it. 
TP away from the ledge, going to keep himself safe, although only just. A handful more crits would have been the end of his life. And now we have the Blink Tiger up for Speed Gaming as well. After getting that Roshan, they find themselves with a lot of momentum. Global Silence uses. They try to save the Chetafin mid. It's not going to be so lucky. However, the right clicks might be enough. Four staff away? No. Uh, it's going to be Aegis down. But now the turn with the Blink in from the Axe. That's going to be one death. And now Mypro is going to be chopped down with that Culling Blade, making it a double kill. And even though it costs him an Aegis, that's what it's there for. Yeah, I mean, Mistrust invested yet again so much. Just one Aegis. So... Oh god, um, I'm, I'm a bit scared for Mistrust here because it looks to be like yet another game where they're going to play from behind and just looking at the net worth chart, I mean sure the Sven is ahead, but the three people, uh, the th three players behind him are all from Speed Gaming, so Speed Gaming, uh, if you look at the golden net worth, uh, if you look at the net worth and experience graph, yeah, they're, s they're ahead and it's, it's not looking good for Mistrust. It definitely isn't. And these items on the Sven, it doesn't feel like they're immediately transitioning into enough advantage inside the team fights. The Blink Dagger and the Axe mean so much more than just a Mask of Madness and the components towards a BKP. And even the supports, they're getting a decent amount of levels on both of them. They're going to collapse inside the woods. The smoke is going to pop and will blink away from Hee. It's going to keep himself safe. They will snag a couple of jungle creeps, but that's about it. That was so good positioning from the Venge. He, uh, the Venge stood on the uh, on the cliff and scouted out the smoke. And they actually didn't have vision over the Vengeful Spirit, so the Axe thought there was somebody farming the neutrals, and he jumped in there. So that was a really good play from the Venge. Um, neither side can actually capitalize on this. Actually, no. Yeah, looks like Speed Gaming might go for this troll on the bottom lane. Yeah. Eh, scratch that. They're, they're going to think better of it. They don't have any vision of the troll right now, and... Things are going to be diffused, at least for the next couple of seconds, as both teams going to farm up their own wood. Shadow Fiend on the dire side, and Lycan, er, rather Sven on these two meeting games. Although the Lycan Wolves are scouting out through the entirety of this. Yeah, um, speaking of vision, I mean, yeah, sure, the Wolves are scouting a lot, which I think is a really good play here. Um, but they don't really have good words, though. I mean, the way they're playing is very aggressive. They obviously also want to push the lanes in, but they don't really have the wards to sustain all of that because if you want to push in, you kind of want to get the vision inside the enemy jungle or behind the enemy lines so you know if it's safe to push in or not and where the where the supports are positioning themselves if they are there to back them up. But um, they only have like one ward up and it's very defensive actually. Yeah, I don't think this ward really is doing much, if anything, for them at all. They are going to drop a ward in iteming lines to spot out the woods, and it's definitely much needed for them, as they will be able to shore up that weakness a little bit. Well, for now, we might be looking at a jump soon, but the tier 1 tower in mid doesn't look like it's very defendable. They'll lift this one, Myth, but it's probably just going to fall. Yeah, it feels like Myth, or uh, Speed Gaming actually, is waiting a bit on a uh, few good eyes. Oh, jump in on Myth. They are going to be able to call Global Silence comes out as the Wishshark Ultimate's channel doing decent damage to my pro, but not enough. BKB popped out by Yukels, gets the stun onto two as he tries to cleave through them, but the wolf is fighting back. They are going to survive with the axe. They just need one more auto-attack. The axe flying through from the troll is going to be enough. Back into his normal form. Chaoya is not doing as well. Paralyzing Gas going to buy him a little bit of space, but with the Broodling split, it might be enough. Witch Doctor Food Restoration is still flying through. Blink clap, crit, TP back to the base. It's not going to succeed. That uphill miss not going to come out from the troll. Now they're going to lose melody as well in a triple kill for my pro so that's the thing we talked about right if you pick up a mech on the shadow fiend you kind of have to play around it as well so what speed gaming did was they just pushed in without the shadow fiend i mean sure the tier one tower was basically dead already but the mech is such a big part of your push potential or your like team fight potential you don't really want to fight it without it and yeah that's why they lost three heroes if that if they had a mech there they would have probably lived on oh, yeah. and maybe gotten a few return kills definitely the lichen and yeah i think that's definitely a good point they need that shadow fiend there at the very least to get a tier one tower up towards top and i believe they got the destruction on the one in mid but still, things are not looking as good for speed gaming as they could have been. I think that fight could have been decisive in their favor. It felt like both the, sh like the Shadow Fiend and the rest of his teammates were having different ideas about how to approach the situation right now. Because the Shadow Fiend, I thought it was not too bad of a decision to just you know farm up a bit and get that BKB up. Because just having the mech doesn't really make you that strong in the team fight, And having the BKB definitely makes you a bigger threat, obviously. And um, but it felt like they were like having these different ideas. Okay, I want to farm up, but my teammates actually want to push. So what am I gonna do? Um, it was a bit of awkward mo moment, I guess. 
now with the BKB as well as the mecha for the Shadow Fiend, they can feasibly look for a push down towards bottom as most of the tools that Myth have are not going to go through the BKB. The damage from the Sven, of course, is going to, but Shadow Fiend's sitting on a decent chunk of armor, and as long as he doesn't have to deal with the Brewmaster split, there's plenty of tools that Speed Gaming have at their disposal to keep this SF safe. So they are going to start this jump, but it looks like Myth looking for a wraparound under the guise of smoke. It's going to pop as they look for a blink in. However, the Global Silence comes out. He, he can't get off his ultimate, and now he is going to fall with a couple more raises thrown out. They will dodge that stun from the Storm Hammer with the BKB popped out by Piao. Now looking to turn the Lich Ultimates bouncing through, but being absorbed mostly by these <clears throat> wolves from the Lycanthrope. They will be able to cleave down the Axe, four staff forward onto the Sven. Now on the sidelines, they'll lose Nokia as well. It's going to be a two for one, and let's see how long this is going to last. Shadow Fiend does not have the mechanism or the BKB, but it probably doesn't matter. A four staff forward with the Glaze of Wisdom, one raise. Uh, that's going to be a double kill for the SF, and Speed Gaming can continue on this push. I wonder how often he is going to make the same mistake over and over again, because this is like the second time he blinked in and got immediately countered by the Silencer Ultimate. I mean, sure, it's a fast reaction by the Silencer, but you should know that if you jump in on them and get, like, that's a high potential you're going to get silenced before you actually get the ultimate off, right? So... Sketchy, ooh. very hopeful TP by the Lycanthrope, as that's going to get cancelled by a Stormhammer. Yeah, that was very optimistic. But yeah, um, the counter initiation from the silencer was really great. Um, the Brewmaster was basically useless in the team fight. I mean, he got bursted down in like seconds, and he didn't even get his ultimate off, so... This is something that he cannot let happen. I mean, sure, he has to be the initiator, but at the same time, he has to get the ultimate off as well. So I think... They actually reached a point where the shadow, uh, where the Sven should be the one running in and, you know, um, initiating and attracting the attention. Yeah, I think that's a fair point. Blink Dagger now purchased up by the Shadow Fiend. He's going to deliver that out to himself as well. Now is getting incredibly strong. But in that last fight, he wasn't able to really focus anybody down. A couple of raises for burst damage was nice. But it really kind of feels like Shadow Fiend needs to start picking up the right click slack soon. And he also got kited really easily. I mean, he got slowed down a bit because of the Lich Ultimate. And, I mean, Sven, uh, Sven and Troll are both faster than him. So it's it's like this awkward moment where you're trying to d decide, wait, am I hitting him? Am I hitting uh, him after all? Oh, oh, my pro. Invis Rune on the Axe going to set up a pretty easy kill on the Troll with the Witch Doctor Ultimate channel. There's not really a chance for him. He's going to get cold down. And, yeah, you know, easy killing spree ended, set up by some deep vision coming out from the Axe with that invis. Yeah, speaking of vision, uh, both teams are a bit stingy, I guess. Oh, no, uh, Speed Gaming just dropped the ward. But, yeah, Mistrust, once again, don't really have the best vision on the map right now. They have one vision in their jungle, which is kind of nice, I guess, but it's just sort of like standard uh, ward that it's not really that useful, especially when you're, like, farming on you know, where the uh, troll was farming right now, so... They have to play a bit more safe like that, uh, than that. Yeah, definitely. We'll have to see if they're going to be able to accomplish that goal. Lycanthrope is going to be working towards an Assault Cross, currently sitting in the Hyperstone. And enough money to pick up both of the armor components, sitting on the chainmail inside his inventory. Smoke up from Speed Gaming, however, as they look to shake things up. This ward inside the... <clears throat> Woods might give them a false sense of security as Brewmaster is farming up. We will be Blink called. Blink it from the Shadow Fiend. Ultimate Unwound. And that's going to be the end of his life. TPN to that tower is going to be cancelled by Lakels. And this means Tier 2 Tower is free for the taking. And, well, un unfortunately for uh, for Speed Gaming, Roche is not up yet. So they're going to have to wait a minute. But still, um, a huge win for them, obviously. Taking the Tier 2 bottom means they get a lot more control over the enemy jungle and especially control over the Roche Pit, because it's going to be harder for Myth Trust to get to that Roche Pit now. Um, but yeah, again, very unfortunate for Speed Gaming that the Roche is not up. But I think they have the timer down almost perfectly, because uh, YFTX is just sitting there and waiting for the Roche to respawn. Yeah, and that is going to be pretty nice for them, that they'll be able to have that next major objective. And there's not really a chance for them to go for another Tier 2 Tower in the meantime. That was really a good smoke rotation coming out from them, but... Outside of a pickoff and then also a cancelled TP, I don't think they're able to do so. The Silencer still is going to be sitting inside the pit, and even though it looks really awkward to have just a hero AFK in a spot inside the map, this is the only way to ensure that they get vision for it. Oh no, Silencer decides against it. He's going to force staff out right as Rose respawns. Yeah, he has to though. He saw the enemies coming yeah. in, and um, they were for sure going to check the Roche pit. I mean, 
you kind of have to rent. And now the rush is back up. Both teams know it, though, because they have the Wolves and the Korea. Actually, I'm not sure if the Korea spotted it out, but uh, Myth just doesn't care anyway. They want to take this tier 1 tower so they can contest Roche better if they choose to in the future. And a counter smoke coming from speed. They'll jump in with the axe as well as the Shadow Fiend. Not going to unleash the ultimate yet. He has the BKB and going to town with the right clicks. They won't be able to focus down the Brewmaster before the ultimate with the Lich ultimate. Like it is going to lose his life. Brewmaster inside the split for him. All of his pandas are falling pretty low, but not low enough. This Brewmaster is not really doing much of anything. He stuns up Piao, and that's nice, I suppose, with the Blade Mail. Axe going to town. They'll unleash the Shadow Fiend ultimate this time around. We'll be able to raise down its reward. That's going to be a double kill after he cleans up the spen and. Well, I'll lose one more as the Lich is going to be dropped down by the Silencer, making a 4 for 1 trade. That Brewmaster's foot really felt like it did nothing. It really didn't. He was really confused at, at the beginning as well. Like, I, I watched him and he jumped in and he didn't even know whether he should ultimate or not. And then he did. And he didn't really have a target because the most important target, the, the Shadow Fiend, he was BKB'd. Uh, the second most important target, the Witch Doctor who was channeling his ultimate, he was actually hidden in the tree so he couldn't find him. And I mean, sure he can, I guess, focus the silencer, but after he used his ultimate, he already did his job, you know? So it was really awkward for him, and um, I thought that Mythrust actually got away safe at first, like they had a one-on-one -on -one trade, and I think they should have just retreated, but they stayed there for way too long and gave away four kills and a gem, which I think is an even bigger deal, because they purchased the gem to gain a bit more map control back. But now they gave it away. It's a fresh gem and it's a huge uh, gold swing. Yeah. Any semblance of map control that Myth had is going to be going down the tubes at this point. It actually isn't going to be a BKB, or actually, no, it's going to be an SY now for this Fen. But still, the Kells, it seems like he's being perpetually kited inside the fights, especially once the BKBs come out and he's not able to drop a Storm Hammer. He isn't doing very much. Let's see. They have the Vlads as well for a little bit of extra life still, but that's also going to be met by an Assault Crass picked up by the Lycanthrope. So Speed Gaming, they're going to feel comfortable going to a Tier 2 tower in mid. Yeah, they definitely want to push the issue here because they're in a really good position. They have all their important items up. I guess they don't have the Manta Cell on the Shadow Fiend, but still, he has the he has the Aegis and you definitely want to make use of that. And I mean, you know at this point that Myth Trust is sort of like under-farmed on certain heroes. The Brew, uh, Brewmaster split is down as well, so you might as well go for it, right? For sure, they'll blink and clap onto a handful of illusions coming up for the Brewmaster. But with two raises, that's going to do the creep wave down. They'll go away at chunking at this tower. The ice armor is mitigating the effect of the assault caress and being annoying for speed gaming, but it's definitely not going to stop them. This tier 3 tower looks like it's going to fall. Blink and immediate split. The global sound's a little too late, and now he is going to be focused down by this Fen, but with the taunt and the wish drop tool, but Lakels is dropping too low. He's going to be ripped apart by the Colon Blade. Running through with the Lycan ultimate, Shadow Fiend going to unleash the ulti as well onto my pro as well as onto Noki with a raise, giving himself a double kill and a wicked 6 3 to boot. Brewmaster back into his normal form is going to be called up and out the right clicks coming out from the Shadow Fiend. It's going to be too much for him to handle. Four for nil as Speed Gaming actually just lose nothing. I feel so bad for Lakels. I mean, they have the perfect answer to his BKB. Like, as a Sven, I mean, he did the right thing. This time around, he was actually one, the one that just went in and soaked up a lot of damage, you know? But. They have the perfect answer to him with the Axe Call and the Witch Doctor Ultimate. They just tore him apart and they're going to take two lanes of Raxes off of this. Yeah, very cleanly too. There's nothing that Myth can do about it. They have no buybacks on any of their heroes in the Solo Lich. There is no way he has a chance of defending against this. And Speed Gaming have blown this game wide open and are looking towards a 2-0. At this point, Myth, what do they need to actually take a fight on their terms? I suppose a few pickouts because at this point you kind of have to realize that team fighting is not really the option because of all the sustain coming out from uh, Speed Gaming. I mean they have the mech, and I mean Shadowfin didn't even didn't even drop his ages throughout the whole fight. So um, there's so much sustain coming out. They're really really tanky. I, I think if they want to fight, they should take out like the supports early on. Maybe uh, make sure that the the witch doctor doesn't uh, the witch doctor and the silencer both don't really get their ultimates off. And if if they do, maybe get like unfavorable ultimates. I mean, in the last fight, it was already good enough to get the Silence ultimate off, even though he still got the Brewmaster ultimate off, so... The Silence ultimate wasn't really useful at all, so this is the sort of stuff you have to play around for, but Speed Gaming, they're moving around really well together, like... There's not really much room to pick off a hero at this point. Yeah, if they bump into the axe or the Lycan throw, everybody else is just a blink away from being right on top of them. So it really feels like Speed Gaming, as long as they play things conservatively and don't get a little too ahead of themselves. They should have this game in the bag. And as we saw in game number one, they're more than capable of taking this.
Yeah, exactly. Their approach is very disciplined. And as you can see, they're already marching down the top lane because they know, hey guys, we still have the Aegis. Just, let's just make use of this. And um, there's no way that, can, that Myth can defend this tier 2 tower. If anything, they're going to defend in base. Um, but as soon as they want to defend in base, all of speed gaming is going to be there. And I think the, yeah, there's going to, there's going to be an Axe Silence Ultimate waiting for them. Yeah. Shadow Fiend still has this Aegis for a minute as well, and this is looking very eerily like the push in mid, where they're just able to chunk away at this tower, and this time they don't have Ice Armor to deal with. Lycanthrope is going to be annoyed by Brewmaster dropping the Drunken Ace onto him, but this might as well be Mega Creeps. They blink in, immediate split, the Global Silence again, going to be a little too late. They try to focus down Mypro, but he's still sitting with that Aegis and honestly just not dropping low enough. This Brewmaster split's doing nothing, and he might even die in it. Look, Hells, he's trying to find a target to stick on, is going to be able to drop Melody Lovers down, but not low enough. Double kill for Piao, as he's able to unleash the ultimate inside everybody. Piao looks like he is going to lose his Aegis, but that's what it's there for. In fact, he might not even do so, as they focus down Look, Hells first, and this is going to be Megas, and might as well be game and there it is gg i mean i sound like a broken record at this point but i think the lack of vision is actually what lost myth the game at this point or at least the last fight because it was actually just the shadow fiend of the lycan pushing in through most of the time and the rest of the team wasn't even there uh but they didn't obviously know because they had to expect the rest of the team being there in the fog and you know backing them up and that's what that's why myth was very hesitant and they were really insecure and at that point obviously there was no way they could actually turn it around well, that said, we are not done with Dota, and not by a long shot here on Hefo TV 2. We are going to have Invasion versus Dream Gaming coming up next, so don't go anywhere. That'll be up shortly. If you like the casting, you can follow me at GrandSV, and I believe you at Skim Dota, or uh, Skim, Skim Gaming. Gaming. Yeah, yeah, there we go. And if you like the labels whole, Hefo TV can be found at Twitter, Facebook, and here on Twitch. So we will have more action coming up in just a couple minutes, so yeah, let's see.